In this screencast, we'll talk about uh, bounded sums, products, and quantifiers and their relationship uh, uh, with primitive recursively closed classes. So let's start with the theorem. This is the first theorem in this screencast, but it's uh, theorem uh, 6.1 in, uh, uh, in chapter 3 of the second edition of uh, Compatibility, Complexity, and Languages by uh, Davis, Segal, and Weyoker. So let C be a primitive recursively closed class and uh, let um, F be some uh, function of n plus 1 arguments. Also in that uh, class, uh, let um, g, uh, function of n plus 1 arguments, to be defined as the sum from 0 to um, y of um, F and let H um, be defined as the product of uh, F, the product of F's uh, from zero to uh, Y. So F of t x one through x n. So then um, these functions G and H defined as the bounded sums of the function f already in c are also in uh, that primitive recursively closed class c. So the idea of the proof is to um, uh, write uh, recurrences for um, uh, g and h, express them as um, a primitive recursive uh, uh, primitive recursive functions. Um, well, not necessarily primitive recursive. I'm sorry, but uh, defined um, um, by primitive uh, primitive recursion or recursion. So um, these are the recurrences for um, a G, and um, these are the recurrences for H. So in the recursive case is um, f of uh, t plus one x one through x n times h of T, x1 through xn. So let's go through um, a couple of examples to get a feel for the uh, recursive definitions. So by the way, the proof is uh, is finished. So we have we have used primitive recursion to define G and H, and uh, so since um, F is already primitive recursive, uh, uh, f is in c, and plus is primitive recursive, so it's also in c, so g uh, is primitive recursive, and h uh, is defined through the binary multiplication, which is also primitive recursive, and hence it is in c, because it is primitive recursively closed. Uh, so this is the uh, definition of uh, g, uh, expansion rather, for g to x1 through xn, so we get these um, uh, sums of three f's, f2, f1, and f0, and uh, let's consider h of 2x1 through xn, it'll be a product of uh, three f's. Uh, so can we start summations, bounded summations, and uh, products at 1? The answer is yes, and we just have to modify the base cases. So uh, let's uh, define uh, g of y x1 through xn, um, t uh, the sum uh, from t1 up to y, f of y x1 through xn, and h is the product from t equals um, 1 to y of uh, f t, uh, f, uh, f of y through uh, f of uh, uh, t, uh, oops, uh, yeah, this should be t, not y, f of t of x1 through xn. Okay, and here we have f of t x1 through xn. Um, so if we define it as g of 0 x1 through xn equals 0, and then uh, the recursive case uh, remains the same, and then uh, f of h of 0 x1 through xn is equal to 1, and the recursive case remains the same as in the previous definition, then we can start our summation and uh, um, summations and products from 1. Uh, so um, this is the 
um, uh, this is corollary, corollary six, um, uh, six, um, 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 uh, this is uh, uh, rather uh, theorem 6.3 uh, 6 uh, in uh, uh, chapter 3 of uh, Computability Complexity in Languages by uh, Davis, Segal, and Weyerker. So if uh, uh, some predicate P of T, X1 through Xn is in primitive recursively closed class C, then um, the bounded uh, quantified version of this predicate uh, for all T less than or equal to Y of uh, P, T, X1 through Xn uh, is also in C. And the existentially quantified, uh, the universally quantified version of predicate and the existentially quantified version of uh, that predicate, bounded existentially quantified version of this predicate, uh, there exists t less than or equal to y p of t x1 through xn is also in c, that uh, primitive recursively closed uh, class where p is. So um, uh, let's uh, prove this. So let's consider the range of t. Uh, t ranges from 0 to uh, up to y. So these are the natural numbers right, over which mm, t ranges. So 0, 1, 2, and, um, and y. So this is, this is the range of t. And uh, uh, then we have this predicate, so p of 0, and then the arguments p of 1, and then the arguments uh, and p of 2, and uh, all the way up to uh, p of y. So um, for the universally quantified um, version, uh, bounded universally quantified version of this predicate to be true, uh, it has to be the case that um, uh, the product of individual uh, p's like p of 0 and uh, p of 1 and times p of 1 times p of 2 uh, and all the way uh, up to p of y has to be um, equal to 1. So since we have the uh, definition of the bounded product then we can express the bounded universally quantified predicate uh, in terms of the bounded uh, product so um, the product uh, uh, from t equals to 0 up to y of p, uh, t x1 through xn, and this product has to be equal to 1. So uh, the bounded, um, the universally quantified version of that predicate is also in the same class. So since it is defined in terms of the bounded product and equality. Uh, now let's, um, we've got some space, let's consider uh, the existentially uh, bounded version of this uh, predicate. So there exists a t less than or equal to y for which pt and then x is, is true. So this is true if and only if the sum of individual p is uh, at 0 and then at 1 and then at uh, um, y is equal to, well it's not equal to 0. Right. Or mm, we can say that it is uh, it is greater than zero, so it has to be at least one, or it's not equal to zero. So since we're summing over natural numbers, so it's not equal means um, that it is uh, at least one. So we can um, um, define the existentially bounded version of this um, uh, predicate in terms of the summation. So the bounded summation from t mm, is equal uh, from t equals to um, uh, zero e equal to zero uh, up to y of p t x one through x n. All right, this sum is not equal to zero or greater than zero. So can we define uh, um, strict bounded quantifiers? In other words, uh, instead of saying less than or equal to y uh, for the upper bound, can we say less than y? So 
um, for all t uh, less than y p of t x1 through xn um, so mm, uh, yes we can define it in terms of the um, mm, for all t uh, less than or equal to y not strict uh, universally bounded quantifier and uh, t um, is equal to y or uh, p of t x1 through xn is true and uh, we can do the same uh, trick uh, for the strict existentially uh, bounded quantifier there existed t strictly less than y for which um, uh, p of t x1 through xn so in that can be defined in terms of the non-strict existentially bound quantifier that existed t less than or equal to y t is not equal to y and um, p of t x1 through xn Let's consider a couple of examples. So let's uh, use the um, uh, existentially bounded uh, quantifiers to define the relationship, uh, the predicate, uh, y divides x. So uh, y divides x, um, if and only if there exists um, a t less than or equal to um, x, such that y times t is equal to x. So, and um, it is a, by the previously proved theorem, it is a primitive recursive function, y divided x. So let's def define uh, uh, prime n, n is prime. So n is prime, um, and that means that n is greater than 1, and for all t less than or equal to n, t is uh, 0 or t is 1, t is a divisor, t is 1, or um, t is n, or t does not divide n. 